Good morning and welcome to Zen Fits here in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world. I have on, I don't, I'm not wearing my holy shawl this morning, I'm wearing the one that's not quite full of holes. A little chilly here in the house this morning, well it's always chilly here because we keep the temperature down to save on heat. <laughs> Title of this talk is, The Eye Worm is Hooked. The Eye Worm, little I, big W, kind of like iPod or iMac or iPhone, the eye worm is hooked. So I haven't really planned, I've been writing about the eye worm this morning. Eye worm is thinking, the thinker, the you, you're thinking. You're sitting here looking at me, thinking about what's he going to say now? Or how long is this going to last? Or this is silly, or this is good. <laughs> thinking, thinking. I think, therefore I am, said Descartes. That's the eye worm. Now, you know, worms, hook, fishing worms are, you know, there's a lot of gifts on them, a lot of little images of the hook, you know, with a worm on it, and he's looking at you like, you know, help. <laughs> squirm, squirm, squirm. It's a great metaphor. Because the eye worm is on a hook, and it's in the water, and it attracts a fish, and the fish bites the eye worm, and a fisherman or somebody above in a boat yanks the fish up into the boat. Yanks, you know, so from the worm's point of view, it is yanked up into something unknowable. Has no idea what's above the surface of the water. The fish doesn't know what's above the water. The fish doesn't know what it's like to not be in water. Well, it can jump out. Of course, then it dies. But I'm metaphorically messed up here, but <laughs> let's get down to the point. So, and I, 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 I don't think I've ever shared this on Facebook before, but it was uh, 1968. No, I'm sorry. It was uh, 1980 at Swami Muktananda's Winter Ashram in Miami, where I went twice from Cleveland that winter. Um, and the last time I was there, I was meditating before I left at the noon chant. And I had a samadhi. So, and I remember it now just as clear as if it happened a few minutes ago. I was sitting there meditating. And suddenly, my thinking self, my I, my personality, was there in front of me. Like a worm on a hook. And it was hanging there, squirming. Thinking, 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 but I was this vast awareness. I was the sea. Awareness was witnessing or watching my thinking, wordy personality with its history, memories, the whole works in front of me. And I, I was just aware of it. I wasn't thinking about it, of course, because thinking was there. Just here's the hooks, right? So thinking was in front of me. I was watching thinking. And then suddenly, whoa, the thinking and the witness were both pulled up into the light. It was at, like the sun. It was as if you were underwater, the way of water. You were underwater and if you could look up, the, there's just this bright light at the surface. And so, suddenly, this force pulled both the awareness and the worm up into the light. And like a flashbulb, you know when a flashbulb goes off? In that moment, it's just light. And then after the light, the room takes form and you see more of the room. In other words, that light 
I'm jumping over to a flash bulb. That flash of light illuminates the whole space. You know the whole, whereas before you just knew a rather limited light, like maybe, uh, <coughs> you know, like, like you, you have your, like you have a flashlight and you look, you know, there's a limited light. The darkness has a boundary. There's like the light and then there's, the light fades into blackness, you know, but then a flash bulb goes off, bam, and you see the blackness is illuminated. But that light comes from outside. That light is, happens to you. It's not like you can turn it on. You can't turn on and turn off the light of knowing because what we think is knowing is consciousness, is the eye worm. <laughs> Damn it. I keep forgetting my, I guess you're hearing this. I keep forgetting my uh, microphone. I'm getting, I'm getting demented. <laughs> so I hope the iPad picks it up. Anyway, we're talking about the eye worm and we're talking about the, the eye worm, the thinking conscious self and awareness, and then both being pulled up into light, the light of lights. Bible talks, Jesus talks about that. I'm the light of lights. You know, so the worm and the light and, and awareness, the observer, the worm and the observer both got pulled up into the light of lights and disappeared. And then the eye worm came back down. Cut into awareness, but kind of like a worm whose wings were fringed. He'd just gone into the lantern and come back. And he comes back and, and the eye worm says, oh, that's what death is like. <laughs> and for the next couple of days, I was kind of like in this uh, samadhi of uh, equanimity. The samadhi of equanimity is when everything is okay. You, the world, your existence, is absolutely okay. And then, of course, the world began to come back as it used to be. And my spiritual journey went on, you see. But I, I, I'm sharing this with you. Um, and I don't usually share this because, you know, really it, it was, it was um, well, anyway, I don't, it doesn't make me feel I'm special. It's just, it's just an experience I had, which is metaphorically everyone's potential, because we're all the eye worm. So, the, so I wrote about the eye worm, more or less like a caterpillar. So the eye worm is a caterpillar who dreams about being a butterfly, or it dreams it is a butterfly, or it dreams it can't be a butterfly. But anyway, the dream is suffering but practice when you have a practice when you have an intention to awaken the butterfly when you want to be a butterfly more than anything else when being a butterfly consumes you when being a butterfly is like having your hair on fire the worm wants to be a butterfly more than anything else, 24 seven, this practice becomes the cocoon. And in that cocoon, you kind of bake, you kind of transmute yourself from the worm into the butterfly. And gradually, gradually, the wings of the butterfly form in the cocoon and then one day you pop out <laughs> and you realize that the worm is the butterfly and the butterfly is the worm they're not separate they're different but they can't be separated anyway hope you hear this because uh, I, must, I must be getting forgetful here now that i'm getting older anyway thanks for dropping in the worm is hooked. The worm is hooked.